Hello and good morning to all of you. Thank you very much for attending this conference. Um, so I will now continue by outlining opportunities arising from the use of new technologies, advanced technologies based on genetics, chemistry and forensics uh, for fish product traceability. To provide you a very brief background, actually um, if you look at the oceans, the um, state of um, the main part of our stocks is really dire. Eighty percent of marine fish stocks worldwide are fully or overexploited or even depleted. The situation in EU waters is not much better, which is one of the reasons why currently the common fisheries policy actually is being reformed. A big problem in this context, a big challenge that we face is illegal fishing. The proper technical term is um, illegal, unreported, unregulated fishing or IU fishing, which poses a huge threat to biodiversity and ecosystems. Also, and related to that, it really undermines uh, approaches to ensure um, sustainable fisheries management. And also it has a very bad impact on socioeconomic development worldwide. On the other hand, we do know that fraud, mainly through false labeling of fish products, reaches far into the fish product supply chain. This represents a very high value. Um, it is rather difficult to detect. And also, of course, it undermines consumer information and trust, and in its worst case, it can lead to adverse health effects. The EU legislation, and that was nicely already lined out also by Simon, actually supports traceability, for example, in the Regulation 178 2002, where you have a lot of labeling rules. Additionally, recently, the European Union took major action to improve the Common Fisheries Policy Control Scheme by uh, implementing the Council Regulation 1224-2008. And one of the main pillars of this regulation is actually, and interestingly, traceability. Very much linked to that, also recently, um, uh, Regulation 1005-2008, actually, the other one was 2009, uh, the so-called IU regulation was implemented. There, a major ingredient is the catch certificate, which should ensure that any fish that is imported into the EU or sold within the EU comes from legal catches. What we really would like to see in the fishery sector, very analogous to the agricultural sector, is of course a traceability scheme from, from ocean to fork and back. So at each step of the supply chain, be it at the catch site, be it at the landing site, be it through the, con um, through the transport, really until our plates, we would like to be able to identify what we are really eating. This is all very nice, and as I said, we have traceability schemes. Unfortunately though, both traceability and certification is basically nowadays based on the written word. And this is prone to falsification. So as Paul has said, we dialing need, we really need urgently independent control technologies. These technologies, ideally for the fishery sector, should be able to answer the following questions. What species are we talking about? What species is, made up, uh, is our product made of? Where does the fish or the fish product come from? And what will become increasingly important due to the, um, uh, the agricultural sector, which is on the rise, is actually we, will be able, we would like to be able to decide whether it is of wild or aquacultural origin. But fortunately, nature endowed us with a great gift, DNA. And DNA not only is the molecule of life and uh, the basics for evolution, but also it's a, it's a kind of natural tech. Each of our cells contains three billion base Basis, which we conveniently um, depict with A, T, C, and G. And actually, the sequence of A, T, G, and C is different between all of us. We have a huge diversity, and that is not different for fish or any other animal. So we can use it to distinguish between individuals. We can use it to distinguish between populations which are localized at different geographical um, locations. And we can also use it in order to distinguish between species. When it comes to genetic markers used for species identification. This is actually fairly established. Some of you might have heard of the Barcoding of Life project, which for fish intends actually to identify each and every fish species using one genetic marker. And that can be done. So the idea is really that if you are in doubt about your fish fillet, you can isolate DNA from this fish fillet, you sequence the very DNA marker, and you compare it to a reference um, database where all sequences of other species are deposited, and this will unambiguously tell you what species you have on your plate. Much more challenging is the direct determination uh, where your fish comes from. 
Now, this um, slide actually depicts and outlines how this works. We can, use, um, we can determine the genetic makeup of fish populations in the sea here, an example for cod in either the North Atlantic, North Sea, or Baltic Sea. The genetic makeup is actually represented in coloring, so North Atlantic would be red, North Sea green, Baltic Sea yellow. Now, if you have a fish of unknown origin, the idea is that you identify markers, genetic markers, and you sequence them, you compare them again to a reference a database, and this will give you a probabilistic model of where your fish comes from. In this case, and this is actually an, uh, an example, a real example, you're capable of stating that if you compare Baltic Sea cod to um, of Atlantic Sea Cod, you, you're capable of uh, identifying it unambiguously and assigning it to the Baltic Sea. In the case of comparing Baltic Sea to North Sea, you still have a probability of 99%. I would like to stress, actually, that this is a major breakthrough, because for a long time, researchers believed that due to the open area of oceans, it's just a huge blue thing, there is no population structure of marine fish. And now we have shown the contrary, and we have shown it can be used for fisheries control and enforcement purposes, and actually it has already been used in a case where fishermen delivered a falsified catch and landing declaration. Simon already outlined the principle of using chemical or isotope markers also for origin assignment. This can be done for fish too in calcified structures such as the otholith, the fish ear bone. The idea is really that these calcified structures, um, they, are, they absorb chemical elements from the sea, surrounding seawater, and this um, chemical element concentrations pretty much reflect the characteristics of the surrounding seawater, which are geographically different. As you can see here, this can be used in uh, the Baltic Sea to, to distinguish between herring coming from either the Western Baltic Sea or to other parts in the uh, Eastern Baltic Sea, really showing that this origin assignment can even be performed on fairly small geographical scales. And just to say this, these um, small geographical scales are also feasible nowadays using genetic markers, which is, of course, a huge asset. Now, another great asset of using DNA analysis is that you can use it on a very large scale, uh, a range of products, starting from the whole fish, but often you can decide what kind of fish you're talking about is just looking at it, but are down to products like fillets. And if you talk about products, you can talk about fresh fish, frozen fish, dried fish, until cooked fish even. And if you talk about cooked, it can be boiled, fried, baked, and so on, so on and so on and so forth. And also, and interestingly, you can even analyze mixed species situations. So if you have fried fish and it's made up of different species, you can use DNA marker analysis to see what's in there. Now, a quick word on forensics. I mention this because it seems to me that in this field, uh, when it comes to food security, authentication, and traceability, forensics is becoming very popular, as mentioning maybe also due to the popularity of a lot of TV series. I just want to point out that already, as such, the technologies I presented can support greatly monitoring systems. You can do um, routine monitoring along this fish supply chain just using these uh, analysis without forensic standards. However, if you talk about targeted investigations, forensic standards, and forensics really is just the scientific information to criminal investigations, can be a great asset and can strengthen the investigations. This all, in my opinion, is a question of costs and benefits, and has really be to be regarded for each case. In summary, it has to be said that DNA-based species identification is feasible and cost-effective. Origin assignment has been proven feasible for many highly commercial fish species nowadays, such as salmon, cod, European hake, herring, and common sole, for example. And this is really a major step forward. Interestingly, the analytical capacity is available to do these, to use these technologies, available in many countries, but still they are heavily underutilized. In our opinion, one of the main reasons why this is so, and this has been mentioned now um, repeatedly, is that the uptake of these outline technologies needs improved awareness building and multi-stakeholder collaboration, which is why this, uh, an event such as today's is, of course, highly precious. Finally, I just wanted to point out that the JRC recently published a report on this very subject, not only explaining the technologies, but also delivering a lot of examples for their application, which is freely available in the exhibition area. Thank you very much. Thank you.